Okay, my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a 650 that we're having a problem with. We just came into the shop and I feel it has a partial restriction in it and uh, the readings are kind of cocky in a way because they're not following the, the particular uh, diagnostic path. So, uh, right now, we got e equal pressure on the high side and the low side. I'm going to turn it on. Freezer's okay. I turn it on and let it run a little bit. Then I'm going to come back. So just stand by. All right, so the pressure is going down. It's been running a couple of minutes. Now I've put some Freon in here a couple of times, a nice chunk of it, so we should have a positive pressure. I'm looking at the head pressure. We have 75, maybe 80. Normally it should be somewhere around 125. So the, the head pressure is low. So when the head pressure is low, the back pressure is low, um, at least tradition says, this is what I learned in school, you have a Freon leak. If you have low back pressure or you're in a vacuum and you have a high head pressure, maybe 150 or something like that or even more, then you have a restriction. But that's not the case here. So this is showing us that we're low on both uh, both sides of the system but that's not where it ends stand by I'm gonna come back in a minute <clears throat> okay a couple minutes passed look the needles going up now was down in the 25 inch of vacuum now it's up to 20 15 it's fluctuating up and down up and down Okay, so about half an hour has passed. It's running in a 25-inch vacuum. 75 pounds on the head. I'm going to shut it off. Now normally when you shut it off and you close the system, the pressure should come up right away because the cap tube will pressure, equalize the pressure on both sides of the system. And that's not moving. And that's a deep vacuum as if there was no Freon in there. So, and the head pressure is also staying at the same point. So, what do you think? I think it has a restriction because if the pressure doesn't come up right away, equalize it. I mean, it'll take a while, but that means there's a blockage somewhere. All right, I'm going to let this sit. It's now 4.30 in the afternoon. See how long it takes for that to start moving, because I know it will come up. I will come back. So a few minutes have passed, three minutes or so. <coughs> the pressure is starting to come up. And the head pressure is starting to come down a little bit. Not much, there's a couple of degrees there. Let's see how long it takes. Because I've done this before, and the pressure went all the way up to about 65, which is probably equivalent to uh, what the pressure should be at the room temperature here. And um, so there's several things that we can do here. If it is a restriction, we can, oh, just popped up a little bit more. We can change the heat exchanger. This is a normal fix. This is a normally what we would do. But since the refrigerator is in the shop, we're not in the field, we could try something else. Now, I do have a video on my channel on how to clear a cap tube using lacquer thinner, a little bit of lacquer thinner, suck it through, cut, drain. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out whatever refrigerant we have in there. Nothing comes out, and we know we have a leak, because I put Freon in here. 
All right, so we're going to do that. The pressure is coming up more. I'm going to let this balance out, and then we're going to see what we can get out of this. So this thing's been sitting for a while. Back pressure is at 50. Head pressure is like around 60. It's very slowly balancing out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the uh, recovery and drain out the Freon and then we'll see what's going on. Okay. We're down in a 10 inch vacuum. Pulled out. Looks like four ounces maybe. Let's see one, two, three, four, five ounces of gas. That's not bad. If we had five ounces of gas in there, we should not have been operating in that deep vacuum. And this refrigerator takes eight ounces. So um, I say there's a restriction. I'm going to let it sit overnight, come back in the morning, pull some more Freon out and see how much we can get out of it. And then we're going to disassemble the filter dryer and expose the capillary tube and we're going to pressurize it and we're going to see if it's clocked. Okay, so we let this uh, sit uh, overnight and we can see that the pressures are down. This high side's reading zero. Still just a little bit of refrigerant on the low side, so I'm going to turn on the um, recovery system and pull that rest of that out. And then we'll just cut the cap tube and we'll start testing the system. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here, make sure you got the right system here. We've got the refrigeration system. We're going to cut this dryer out. And then we're going to pressurize the low side of the system because that's going to force the refrigerant or the nitrogen through the evaporator coil out through the cap tube and come out on this end and we're going to see what kind of flow we have in there. Okay, here's what we did. We replaced that rubber bushing there in the back for the compressor and we put washers and nuts on all the other studs because they were missing, got that done. Now we have our new filter dryer which we're going to sweat in and we also cut out this monstrosity of a connector here and it's filled with oil. Couldn't blow through it. I'm assuming that's where the restriction came from. So anyway, we're going to sweat these lines. Okay, so let's pressurize this thing now with nitrogen. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so now we're going to pull the vacuum on it just in case there's mortar in there, moisture in there. Okay, we're looking good here. Shut this down. We got eight ounces of 134A. 
This has the original evaporator coil in it. So we're going to weigh in 8 ounces. All right, let's see what we got here. We want 8 ounces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we want a little bit over 7, maybe 7 and a quarter should be 8 ounces. Okay, I'm going to wait for this to fill up. Right now we only have 1, 2, 3, 4 ounces. We got we got to go up to seven and a quarter on the R22 scale. Okay, let's get it into the system. Okay, here we go. We'll let that fill up, and then we'll check our our back pressure and our head pressure once all the freons in there. Okay, all the freons in there. The back pressure is uh, approximately 15 PSI, which is good. Anywhere between 12 and 15, I like it. And I like it. Wait for the shut off, finish putting it back together, and we'll be done. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, but I, uh, I think um, the evaluation is that it had a restriction. That's the diagnosis. It had a restriction and that coupling that they used to sweat the discharge line was filled with oil and it was blocking the flow. I'm assuming that's what it was because we eliminated that and we changed the dryer and now it's working. So the heat exchanger is good. All right. So um, any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.